Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is capacitance lecture number three, and we are supposed to start with uh, the combination of capacitors. In the previous class, I think we had dealt with finding out the capacitance of a capacitor. And as I told you, uh, the various ways of finding the capacitance of a capacitor. Basically, somehow you need to find out the potential difference between the two plates. If you are successful in doing so, you would be ending up finding out the capacitance of the capacitor. This topic is though not complete because uh, we might be doing it later on as well when we understand something else about uh, capacitance. So we will come back to it. Who, 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 who. The topic for today is series and parallel combination of capacitors. And I would ask you, what do you know about this? Hmm? Sir, we don't know. We are new in the town. Is that the answer? What do you know about the series parallel combination of a capacitor? Nothing, sir. Huh? What? No one knows anything. I can't understand what you just said. I only heard. The pastor arranged in side by side series, line by line, parallel, sir. Side by line, line by line, parallel. Okay. Side by side series and line by line parallel. That may not be exact description of what I was expecting, but you never get what you expect. You can expect a lot of things, but you will end up getting a lot less than what you expect. Man proposes and God uh, disposes. So I was hoping to hear a lot, but I got only this one. This is probably what you wanted to say, line by line and side by side, whatever. This is what I see, or what we understand. Capacitance in series. Now, when capacitance are in series, then what happens? Now you have this diagram. And uh, apart from saying line by line and side by side, which is a okay description of what is happening here. What do we understand here? When do we see capacitance? Capacitors are in series. This is an example of capacitors which are in series. Now remember, all these capacitors were initially uncharged. So we'll start with the simplest possible case. And the simplest possible case is uh, the capacitors are initially uncharged. So there's no charge on this capacitor. Now I put them like this and I connect a, a, a battery with them. Now what this battery is going to do, we'll also understand that uh, uh, what is the function of a battery? Probably we'll do it after this. Maybe in today's class, only we should be able to cover it. Yes, what do you mean by <clears throat> capacitors in series? When do we say capacitors are in series? Hmm? As you can see here, when, the, when you connect these capacitors to a battery, uh, 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 charge flows in a uh, charge flows through the circuit. Now, if I say that this Q charge is flowing through the circuit like this, what happens is plus Q will come on this plate, which is facing the positive side. Because of plus Q on this side, minus Q will come on this side, the other plate of the capacitor. And the same sequence carries over because the same charge is flowing through that all the capacitors. So when same charge flows through all the capacitors, and that is the best way of understanding it. When same charge flows through all the capacitors, then the capacitors are said to be in series. So the first thing that you must remember about a series combination is same charge flows. Same charge flows. Same charge flows through each capacitor. 
same charge flows through each capacitor then we say capacitors are in series now in this case what is happening is since their initial charges were zero and we will come across cases where the initial charge may not be zero since their initial charges were zero and same charge will flow through all of them therefore the charges on each will be same. So charges would be same. Charges on each capacitor would be same. But again, this is subjected to the condition that initially they are, initially they are what? Initially they are what? Initially they are uncharged. If they are ini initially they are charged, same charge will not come on them. They might have different charges also, but same charge will flow through the circuit. They are in the circuit. They are in one circuit where same charge flows through all of them. Charges would be same. And in this simplest possible case, charges on all the capacitors would be coming same, but potential difference, but potential difference are different. Potential difference across each capacitor is different. You can see V1 is the potential drop across this pink capacitor. V2 is the potential drop across this green capacitor. And my favorite, the blue one, V3 is the potential difference across the third capacitor. You can call the first capacitor as C1, C2, and C3. We understand this up till here, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, since we understand uh, this thing here, we can also understand that uh, 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 what the only formula that we have studied in this entire chapter. What is the only formula that we have studied in this entire chapter, which is somewhat new, somewhat different? What is the only formula that we have studied in the entire chapter? Q equals to CV. Q is equal to CV. That is the only formula that we have studied. So here charge Q, which is coming on capacitor 1, will be equal to C1, V1. That will be again equal to, whoops, I am writing Q. That would be again equal to C2 into V2. That would be again equal to C3 into V3 and so on if there are n number of capacitors connected. We understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. At the same time, you can see that if you add V1, the potential drop across 1 plus V2 plus 3V3, you will get the potential drop across the three capacitors in all. That becomes the battery voltage V. We understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, these three capacitors which are connected in series, same charge is flowing through them. Now, instead of taking them as three separate capacitors, what we can do is we can Consider that, consider what? That there are not three capacitors, but we can replace all of these three capacitors by a single capacitor, which is connected across this single battery. The voltage of the battery is V, and this is equal to C equivalent. So now I can write, this would be equal to C equivalent multiplied by V. Do we understand this or by Y? Understood, sir. Okay. Now, the only task is how do you find out the value of this C equivalent? How do I find the value of this C equivalent? Anyone? C1 plus C2 plus C3. C1 plus C2 plus C3. Whatever comes in our mind, let it go. Remember, we are not playing in Korn Banega Karodpati here. We are trying to understand physics. Now, you can see from this pink thing, you can find out the value of V1. From mm -hmm. this green thing, you can find out the value of U2, of, 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 of V2. From this uh, blue thing, you can find out the value of uh, V3. And you can put all these values here. And you will end up with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, what 
the value of C equivalent. So I am going to put this here. I am going to put this here. Oops, wrong color. I hate wrong colors. I am going to put the value from here to here. I am going to put the value from here to here. And I am going to put the value from here to here. Do we understand this or this is going above our head saying bye bye? Huh? Understanding, sir. Oh. So at the end of the on the right hand side, what I have? I have Q divided by C equivalent. The yellow one. Then on the left hand side, I will have Q divided by V1 plus Q divided by V2 plus Q divided. I am also writing everything in Q divided by C1, Q divided by C2 plus Q divided by C3. And that is how I end up with the value of C equivalent. 1 by C equivalent becomes summation of 1 by CI, I taken from 1 to N. This type of combination of capacitors is known as the series combination. Bye bye. Understood, sir. This is how you derive it. And if you understand it this way, it becomes easier. Remember the concept of capacitor in series is the same charge should flow through them. The same charge should flow through them. The same charge should flow through them. And nothing else. Have you written this, everyone? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in most of the cases, you might not have three or four or five capacitors in a series. In most of the case, uh, cases, you might have two capacitors in series. If two capacitors are in series. C1 into C2 by C1 to C2, sir. Uh, so remember that uh, simple formula. If two capacitors are in series, you can simply put C1, C2 upon C1 plus C2. That would be, I mean, if you can remember these things, small, small things, we can do problems quickly and that is what it matters in the long run. You can also write the value of V1. How can you write the value of V1? Oh. More, or, or more importantly, you can uh, write uh, the value of charge coming on each capacitor. The charge coming on each capacitor will be C1, C2 upon C1 plus C2 because that is your C equivalent multiplied by V. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What will be the value of V1? Potential drop across the first capacitor. Yes. Should not take rocket science. This is electrostatics. Q by C1, sir. Huh? Q by C1. So effectively, it will become equal to C2 upon C1 plus C2 times V. And similarly, you will have V2 as C1V upon C1 plus C2. So you can see voltage across V2 is proportional to C1 or voltage across C1 is proportional to C2. Do we see this? So I can say in case of series combination, 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 case of series combination whenever you have series combination, the potential across each capacitor will be somewhat in the ratio inversely proportional to C. You understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you have, if there are N, N equal capacitors in series, Then, what will be the equivalent capacity? These are simple, simple results. And if you can understand and remember them, 
You can solve the questions easily, simply, quickly. If there are any equal capacitor in series, then what will be the effective capacitor? Is that? C by N, sir. C by N. And your voltage across each capacitor? It would be V by N. Do we understand this? Huh? Yes, sir. C equivalent will become C by N. That means whenever you place two capacitors in series, whenever you place two capacitors in series, the effective capacitance is always less than C1 and C2 ka value. It will always be coming less than the value of both C1 and C2. So, again, an important point. Whenever capacitors are put in series, Whenever capacitors are in series, the equivalent capacitance is always less than CI. You understand the meaning of CI? Huh? Any, any individual capacitor, take any individual capacitor, it would be less than the value of any individual capacitor. No matter how many capacitors are put in parallel or are put in series. Everyone gets this? Yes, sir. Now, again, see, these are simple, simple results. And question based on these results will come and then we should not look for miracles or godly help. God will not come and solve the questions for us. Now, there are only three things that you have to find out in any question, anywhere, whether it's capacitance or resistance or wherever. The first one is what? Namita Bachchan. Shahru Khan. Mahesh Babu. Charge, sir. Ram Charan. Okay, Ram Charan. So the first thing is Ram Charan. Uh, that is Q. It can be Q in capacitor or I in uh, register. What is the second thing? Uh, I don't capacitance know. of capacitor. In most of the cases, capacitance is given to you. They will not ask you to find out the capacitance, dear. Whew. What is the second thing that they can they might ask? V. V, potential drop across the capacitor or potential drop across the register. What is the third thing that they can ask? U. Uh, U, it is potential energy stored in the capacitor or energy dissipated as heat in the register. So both are similar things. So these are the only three things that they are going to ask. We have seen charge, how it how the charge is coming on the capacitor. We have also seen the value of voltage. It is inversely proportional to capacitance. What can you say about energy? If there are capacitors connected in series, what will be the energy proportional to? Huh? And it does not require rocket science because there are only two formulas that we have studied in this chapter. One, and all the two formulas were from the last chapter only. They are not nothing new. The first formula is, huh? What's formula is? Amita Bachchan. Half into QV, sir. The first formula is Q is equal to CV and the second formula is energy is half CV square. <laughs> Come back to the question. Energy. So this charge is going to be same. Ting, ting, ting. When... When, when when capacitors are connected in series and they are initially uncharged, charge is going to be same. And we have seen voltage. Voltage is proportional to what? Huh? C. Basis. One by C, one by C, sir. The difference between C and one by C, beta. Please remember this. I will get a heart attack one day. One by C. You. It does not require rocket science. This is electrostatics. Two formulas we have read. That's it. 
what would be u proportional to? Take a deep breath, open your eyes, and look at the universe. It's beautiful. V, sir. Huh? V, potential. Okay. I hope, I, I think that I'm not able to put my question correctly, maybe. It's proportional to 1 by C. It will also be proportional to 1 by C. Why? Why? Because these questions are going to come as objective in your exam. Then we cannot say he was just talking about Amitabh Bachchan and Ram Charan. RRR and uh, Uchaiya, new movies. He never taught us anything about electrostatics. Hmm. Why it is inversely proportional to C? Huh? Q square by 2 Q square by 2 C, sir. Q is same, sir. Q is same in all, sir. So Q square by 2 C, sir. 2 is also constant, sir. So it is inversely proportional to C. So the capacitor which has the most capacitance will have the least energy stored in it. And questions will come like this in your exam. Please remember these small, small, simple, simple things. And this is the time when you can understand them because we are going to start from the very basic. Everyone understand this or bye-bye? Sure, sir. Pushpa part two. Uh, part one, I did not understand. Let us uh, work on part two. Huh? Who is the, who is the actor there? Pushpa? I forgot his name. I hardly remember names. Amitabh Bachchan and Shahrukh Khan are the only two names that come to me. Or Ram Charan or Mahesh Babu. Oh, who, who is that gentleman? The Pushpa, oh, yeah, oh, dialogue, bito, and, and there is a dialogue also. Hello, Arjun. Yes, beta. Sir, sir. Hey, I can't hear it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Pawan, come in, sir. Pawan, Pawan, name is Vinas. Hello, Arjun, sir. Hello, Arjun. Ha, hello, Arjun. Yeah, he has a he has a he has a vanity van which is uh, which is uh, more costly than uh, Mr. Shahrukh Khan. Alu Arjun, yeah, I forgot his name. See, I forgot the name Alu Arjun. So you can also forget that uh, U is inversely proportional to C, but uh, I am not going to uh, uh, sit in an exam of Bollywood test that they will ask me who is Alu Arjun and who, who is uh, starring in Pushpa 2. But they are definitely going to ask you how energy is related to capacitance in case of a series capacitor or a series arrangement. So remember that. That was all about uh, series that we need to know. What is the next thing that we are going to do? Yes? Anyone? Okay. What is the next grouping that we are going to see? The next grouping that we are going to see is parallel. Parallel combination. Parallel combination. So... <clears throat> Rotate this parallel combination. Huh? V same, sir. V same, sir. Okay. V same, sir. Let me get a diagram so that I can save some time. V same, sir. How we, how is V going to be same, sir? How should I connect uh, these uh, gentlemen so that they are... I will have to draw it. I don't I'm not getting it. How is uh, V going to be same, sir? So this is my C1, sir. This is my C2, sir. And this is my C3, sir. And I'm just putting three so that we understand it, sir. And this is my voltage V. Now, there are different, different ways of understanding it. And the more the number of ways you can understand it, it becomes easier for you. This is my gender, there is C1, this is C2, and this is C3. Now, you can see and understand that if you look at uh, these plates, this pink plates, pink plates are the plates of C1. Green, are the plates of C2 and uh, my favorite blue is the plate of C3. Now you can see all the plates. See, uh, one plate of C1, C2 and C3, they are connected to each other and the other plates are also connected to each other. So that type of connection where plates are connected to each other in this fashion, that all the, all the first plates are connected on one point and all the second plates are connected on the second point. 
see this point all plates are connected to this point here and all plates are connected to this point here that is known as a uh, parallel connection and what happens in this parallel connection they will be having the same voltage drop across them the voltage drop across them would be same so that is what we are going to write potential drop pd or you can call potential drop v is same but the charges that they are that, that are going to flow their circuits are different the charges that are going to flow are different but charges are different <sighs> if i say plus q1 oops let me use a different color pink color plus q1 if this plate gets plus q1 this will get minus q1 if this plate gets plus q2 this plate will get minus q2 and if this plate gets plus q3 the other one will get minus q3 so what i'm assuming here is charge is flowing like this ting 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 i hope you understand the ting ting what i'm saying this is ting ting that the charge is flowing now the total charge that flows through the battery is not same in the first case the same charge was flowing through everyone here the charges are different now you can easily understand that uh, what the total charge q that has flown through the battery will be equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 do we understand this yes or no no yes yeah or oh, this is going above what it's saying bye 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 sir i'm going we understand this yes sir okay okay now it's very easy to see that q1 can be written as amitabh bachchan or alu arjun masharu khan what is q1 C1V. See? C1V. They are not less heroes than uh, all these people because right now they are our heroes. If these heroes uh, assist us, we should be into an IIT, probably starting our own uh, startup, and then you will be able to hire all these people and, you know, uh, make, them their, make them your brand ambassadors. Q1 is uh, C1 into V. What about Q2? C2V. Q2 is C2 into V. So here charges are different as you can see. Q3 is C3 into V. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Then on the same uh, same front, I can replace all these three and put one. And that would be Rajnikan because he is equal to everyone put together. So this becomes equivalent. The same voltage V. It's applied across this equivalent resistor, equivalent capacitor. Now, what is the value of this equivalent capacitor? Everyone knows that, right? How much is that? Huh? I don't Even bless you. Okay, so how do you get this value? You just uh, do what I have been doing. Ding, 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 ding. Put this ding, ding here. Put this ding, ding here. And put this ding ding here. But remember, this ding ding will also be equal to C equivalent multiplied by V. Yes or no? Yes, sir. You put all the ding dings here, and you will end up with your end result. And the end result that you are going to get is C equivalent will be equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. Or if I write in general terms, C equivalent will be equal to summation of ci i taken from 1 to n i give you one minute to note it down
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Then you can have if, uh, the same case if n equal capacitors. are connected in parallel then what will happen c equivalent will become n times yes, yes or no uh, yes sir What about the charge coming on each capacitor? Because the potential is same. Charge coming on each capacitor? Charge coming on each capacitor. Ith capacitor will be total charge Q divided by N. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, again, we have only seen three things. Total charge Q on each capacitor, the potential drop across each capacitor, and the energy of this capacitor. Energy of it, energy stored in individual capacitors. Can you now tell me in this case what are they coming proportional to? Nah? Q. The charge on each capacitor will be coming proportional to what? Raru Khan. C. It will be coming proportional to C. That means the capacitor which has more capacitance. And remember, capacitance is the ability to throw charge. So, capacitor which has more charge, eh? the capacitor which has more capacitance will store more charge. That makes sense. This is not nonsense. Then what about V? Same, sir. V, same, sir. Same. Same, sir. Then the energy. Energy. Who will have more energy? Who will have less energy? Directly. Now, in this case, it will be coming directly proportional to C. C. Because here I will use half CV square. Because V is same. So I can easily compare the energies. V is same. Half C V square. So it is directly proportional to C. Do we understand how this is going about what is saying bye-bye? Understood, sir. Now here, whenever we are adding capacitors in parallel, the equivalent capacitor will always be greater than any one of these. It is, in that way, it looks like the reverse of uh, uh, parallel connection. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So they will just get added up, right? So... Uh, on similar lines that we had written, C equivalent will be greater than Ci, any of the capacitance. So if you want to increase the capacitance, add them in parallel. If you want to decrease the capacitance, add them in series. Bye-bye. Huh? Understood, sir. Okay. Have you bought that, uh, that, that book? Or is it still giving milk at home? We got, sir. We will not require it today. So bring it tomorrow also. From tomorrow onwards. Tomorrow Never Comes. Tomorrow Never Dies was one of my favorite movies. P.S. Brosnan. One of my favorite uh, uh, James Bond. Why did I talk about James Bond? Oh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what next? Now, here, uh, what we have seen is the series and parallel combination, but uh, a very important thing. And there was a question of uh, JE as well. Now, let, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Ah, here, sharing of charges. That is what we started our uh, conversation with sharing of charges. When you had two conductors and, and you connect them by a conducting wire, what happens? Nothing happens, sir. We are new in the town, sir. We don't know, sir. Huh? 
when you have two conductors and you connect them by a conducting wire what happens potential becomes same, huh? potential become same. Potential become same. Uh, charges will flow unless potential becomes same do we understand this hmm? yes sir oh, no sir we understand this sir so after some time very quickly the 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 the, the what the Transfer of charges will stop. Yes or no? Huh? If I have two conductors and I connect them by connecting wire for some time, maybe one second, two second, the charges will flow. And after that, uh, the charges will stop to flow because they will reach at the common potential. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now let me ask you this question. And, then, and this question was asked in one of the JEs. It will take some time for me to find out that question. If I had two capacitors like this, ding, ding, C1 charged to a voltage of V1 and C2 charge to a voltage of V2 and I connect them like this. So I connect them instead of conductors, I connect these capacitors by a wire. What happens then? Ma? What happens then? Connect to capacitors by a wire. What happens then? Hmm? Is equal to yes. V one is equal to V two. V one is equal to V two. Eh? V one and V two are different. How V one and V two become same? Eh? I hope you understood the question. I've got one C two by C one plus C two. C one V one by yeah C one V one plus C two V two upon C one plus C two. Eh, na? Day the mark. No. That doesn't happen. That, my dear friend, doesn't happen. No charge flows. Absolutely nothing happens. They just remain chilled out like this. It is what we are doing, chilling out. So they just remain chilled out. Nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? That is the next question. Why does why the same thing doesn't happen when it was happening with two conductors? When we connected them by wire, and this question has come, and it can they definitely come. And when do when I connect two conductors by a wire, charge start to flow. But when I have two capacitors connected, I I connect. Remember, I've only connected one plate of these capacitors. Uh, 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 this this pink one is the only connection between the capacitors, and the other connection is not made. So the other connection is not made. Nothing happens here. No flow. They just remain like this. They just remain isolated. Is no flow of charges. Why there is no flow of charges? That's a question that you will have to find out the answer for. Do you, have you understood the question? Yes or no? Eh? Have you understood the question that I've asked? Have you understood the question that I've asked? What is the question that I've asked? When I connect these capacitors by a wire like this, nothing happens. Why doesn't anything happen? Why doesn't the charge flow? It should have flown because they are at different potentials. But why doesn't the charge flow? And you will have to tell me why doesn't this happen? Have you understood the question? Understood the question? You will tell me the result uh, in tomorrow's class. Now, I want charges to flow. That's I not what I'm Yes, beta? There is no potential difference. There is no potential difference. Yes, there is no potential difference between the two. When I connect them by a pink wire, there is no potential difference between the two. They actually are at the same potential and uh, nothing happens there. The other way of understanding this is one of the plates will be positively charged, the other plate will be negative charged. This positive and negative charge are held by each other unless and until someone forces them to Someone forces them to flow. They will not flow. 
So if I want charges to flow, the one thing that I have to do is connect these two as well. Now, if they are connected like this, then the charges will flow. Then the charges will flow. And this thing is now known as a circuit. So charges can only flow in a closed circuit. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So that is the first thing that you have to understand. Charges only flow in a closed circuit. Charges only flow in a closed circuit. There must be a path for the charges to flow. They only flow when the circuit is closed. Do we understand this, everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. That is the first thing that you have to understand. Okay. Now, let us come to the next case. And as, as I told you, uh, I was looking for that question. Meanwhile, this was the question that came into uh, this J. When I say JE, I don't mean JE main, I mean JE advanced. So that was the question that I was talking about. So I'll just show you that question. This was in the year 1999. Yeah, this question came. And so this was the question that I was talking about. In the circuit shown what, what happens here. So that was it. And unless you understand the concept, you will not be able to solve such questions. Okay. Anyways, moving on to my question. So when I connect them by a single wire, unless and until there is a unless and until there is a complete circuit, nothing happens. Now let me take a different scenario. Let me take a different scenario. If I want charges to flow in a circuit. Charges only flow and we have seen uh, in the previous uh, example of sharing of charges, charges only flow because of uh, difference in potential. Yes or no? Yes Same or no? Time. Now, to make charges flow, the first condition is that there must be a closed circuit. The second condition is there must be what? Potential difference. Charges only flow because of PD, potential difference. There must be a potential difference in the circuit. If there is no potential difference in the circuit, nothing happens. Forget about anything happening. Now the question is, who is going to create this potential difference? Battery. Battery. That is the function of a battery or a cell. A battery or a cell. Battery or a cell creates potential difference in a circuit. Without a battery or a cell, unless there is some other source, you cannot have charges flowing in a circuit. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Huh? We sir. understand this? Yes, sir. So the next heading is battery or cell. A battery is nothing but a combination of cell. Cell is a single unit. And I have a lot of cells to show you. This is a cell. I hope you understand this, right? This gentleman is a DC cell and what that is what we are doing, DC. This is a cell. And if we have if you have more than uh, if you have more than uh, one cell connected to each other, it becomes a battery. Your car battery is an example of a battery because it has more than one cell. And you can see there are different, different uh, electrolytes and this and oh that is chemistry. Forget about chemistry. Chemistry does not make sense. Now what do you know about a battery or a cell? The first thing is the function of a battery or a cell. What is the function of battery or a cell? It creates PD. Potential difference. Potential difference. It is not a supplier. It is not a supplier of charge. 
I've heard students say, what does battery do? Battery supplies charge or electron. Battery is a supplier of electron. No, battery does not have electron. Three electrons that it can supply. Okay, I have free, take it. Battery cannot do that. Battery does not have a free electron. It is not a contractor or a supplier that can give you uh, <clears throat> battery, that can give you electrons or charges. It only creates potential difference and because of this potential difference, you are able to allow current to flow. Then this is the symbol of a battery. Everyone see, everyone know the symbol of a battery? Yes, yes or no? Sir. Yes, sir. There is one big danda and one small danda. What does the big danda stand for? Positive terminal. Ah. This big danda stands for positive terminal and the smaller danda stands for negative terminal. What do you mean by positive terminal and what do you, what do you mean by negative terminal? This positive terminal is at a higher potential. This positive terminal is at a higher potential and this negative terminal is at a lower potential. So, between two points, this battery will create potential difference. The point which is connected to positive terminal will be at a higher, higher uh, potential. The point which is connected to negative will be at a lower potential. Now, from where to where a charge is flow. And remember, whenever we talk about, whenever we are talking about the flow of charges or whenever we are talking about the flow of current, there are two directions that are taken. One is known as conventional direction and one is known as the real direction or electronic direction. And no one talks about the real uh, direction or the or the electronic di uh, direction. Whenever we are talking about the direction of flow of charges, whenever we are talking about the direction of flow of charges or direction of flow of current, we are always dealing with the direction of flow of positive charges. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Direction of current. is taken as direction of flow of positive charges. This direction is known as the conventional direction. But current is not the flow of positive charge, you must understand. Whenever there is a current in a circuit, positive charges are not doing anything. It's the electrons that are doing anything. So actual direction of current is the reverse of this. The actual direction of current is from is the direction of flow of electrons. Do we understand this? That is known as the electronic direction or the real direction. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, from where to where, and whenever we talk about the flow of charge or flow of current, we always take it as positive charge. We only yeah. want positive things in life and negative thing we put in a dustbin and flush it. Now, from where to where positive charges move? Huh? Potential to lower potential. Positive charges always move from higher potential to lower potential on their own. And whenever we talk about battery or whenever we talk about circuit, positive charges are always moving from higher to lower potential outside the battery. Do we understand this? Outside the battery, positive charges are always flowing from higher potential to lower potential. So that is what they can do. So far, so good. What is going above our head saying bye bye? Hmm? Bye bye. Understood, sir. And what is happening inside the battery? Inside the, battery, from, move from lower to higher. inside the battery, if you look. So inside the battery, when you look, you will find out that positive charges are flowing from lower potential to higher potential. That is what is happening inside the battery. Now, how are they moving from lower to higher potential? What is making them to move? to lower from lower potential to higher that is all chemistry chemical reactions 
with all chemistry and I know nothing about it. So I will not say anything about it. Inside the battery, because of this chemical reaction, what does the cell do? It converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Because of this chemistry, which I never had and I never understood. Because of this chemistry, this negative charge, right? this positive charge will flow from negative terminal, lower terminal to the higher terminal. Do we understand this? Huh? Yes, sir. That is the function of a battery. It has to make the, the, the positive charge to go from lower terminal, lower potential to higher potential. We'll put it there and then say, okay, now do, do your job. I have put you there. Now, put, now do your job. That is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach you something and then I will send you to give the exam and then you will have to give the exam. And that day will come very soon. Now, to, 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 to make this negative charge to go from the... Uh, no, to, uh, we always talk about positive charge. To make this positive charge to go from lower potential to higher potential, what, I need, what the battery needs to do? Chill. Okay. I am battery. Uh, chill. You will go to higher potential. Does the battery chill? I am battery. I am chilling out. And the uh, positive charges are automatically going from lower potential to higher potential. And I am chilling out. Okay. I am battery. I am doing my job. Battery has to do some? What? Work. Work. Battery has to do some work, which is what I am trying to do. To try to get you from lower to higher potential and then leave you there. That work done per unit charge is known as the EMF of the battery. Do we understand this? That is what, my dear friends, is known as the EMF or the electromotive force of the battery. And we will discuss this electromotive force since the the time for the class is over. We will be discussing the electromotive force in the next class and we will be seeing what this battery does and then we will move on to solving all types of questions which are possible in this particular chapter. And remember to bring that uh, book also because that will help us in solving questions faster. So I will see you in the next class. We will continue with this battery thing. Lower to higher. It has to do work. And we will uh, understand what happens after that. So on that note, I will wind off your class. Take care. And God bless all of you. Uh, have you understood what we have done today? Or just gone above our heads? Understood, sir. Understood, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Bye-bye. God bless you all.